Hola. Hola. Bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. Bienvenidos. This is an early intermediate podcast and videocast, and so you will hear us speaking in English with lots of Spanish. Okay. So today we're talking about where we left off. Dan dan dan. Se lo puso. Se lo puso. Se lo puso. And we're going to talk a little bit about other stuff as well that's linked to that. Entonces, nos vemos en la segunda parte. I don't swear <laughs> in Spanish. I cut that out. Uh, I just swore in between, but then I cut it out. So, <laughs> chicos. Last time we were talking about the use of se in sí. La La Land. Can you remember La sí. La Land? I remember. So, I left you with a puzzle. Se lo puso. What does it mean? Yeah? Now, do you know what it means? <laughs> it can mean two things. It can mean... He, it can mean two things, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. of course, yeah. Let's say that we're talking about uh, un abrigo. Okay. okay. Un abrigo. So, se lo puso could mean he put it on himself. Or it could mean he put it on somebody else. Yes. Yeah? So, for example, if you uh, imagine... in the, it, What happens is this. The reason that we talked about this uh, originally in the book... Is because in books, when you're reading them, you know, uh, you might read, cogió el abrigo y se lo puso. Okay, and you think, who did what to whom? Exactly. You know, what's going on? What I found, and you might find this, what I found in books is that often the actors are left out of sentences. And sometimes you just don't know who's done what. Quite often. Very, no, I wouldn't say quite often. I say... Unfrequently, you don't know who is the perpetrator, who has received the action. Because if it's not clarified in that sentence, it's clarified before. You've got to be a detective. Hey, but... I mean, if, we only, if there's only one person in the scene, and then we say, se lo puso, then we know that would be ref reflexive, yeah? Of course. I mean, there, there, there are lots of times... If there's a child with the dad, for example, yeah. then we would... There we would have... Cogió el abrigo de su hijo y se lo puso. Exactly. That's what that would be obvious. Exactly. But just so you know, I've read a lot of novels and I've, I've asked Cynthia a lot of questions and often I've said, Cynthia, can you tell me who's doing what in that sentence? And Cynthia's read it going, no. Well, of course, if you just give me a sentence, like if you say, se lo puso, um, can you explain that sentence? Then no. I would have to say you either... That person on himself uh -huh. or him on to somebody else. Yes, but sometimes Cynthia's read the entire paragraph and still doesn't know. That's never happened. That's never happened. Fake news. <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> I'm telling Maybe you. Maybe that's it happened I, once. It did. No, it's happened really. a few times. It's, uh, what, the, better, the better thing that happened was when I was reading a, um, Miguel de Libes' book about the sea, like about a boat, and I read it, I picked it up, <clears throat> tried to read the first page, put it down, disgusted with myself because I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know 75% of the words, Aww. picked it up a little while later when I had my strength back and my confidence back, read it, didn't understand it. Oh, but we're Third talking time. about at the very beginning when you were learning no, Spanish. No, well, yeah, but it didn't matter. Third time, I took it to bed with me. So I thought, hey, Cynthia and I... I I'll, I'll seduce it this time. Cynthia, <laughs> with a book by me. I'll, I'll try this way. <laughs> Cynthia and I will have some fun in bed with this book. Okay? So I said, Cynthia, please help me. I don't understand this. I can't read this book. So Cynthia picked it up and started reading. I said, what does that word mean? And she said, I don't know. I said, what does that word mean? And she said, I don't know. What does that... Cynthia didn't ha put any any more clarity under that. Why? Because it was a book about sailing. It was a book about ships. Then I was reading The Pillars of the Earth True. in English, and he didn't know the vocabulary either. Of course. These are so, old books. So, so come on, so come, don't, on come on, come on. All right, all right, all right. All right. 
So don't always think that that, that is because... And then I looked it up and I still didn't know what it was. It was funny. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> Just a building. Yeah. Just things about Boveda. construction. Yeah, Boveda or something. <laughs> Boveda's everywhere. In, in, uh, a beam somewhere, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vigas y Bovedas. Okay. okay. So, so, se lo puso. Se lo puso. Right. So what we've got is se lo puso. Right. So what you've got to do is be in a detective and just try and work out what who is it referring to. As we say, if you say cogió el abrigo de su hijo y se lo puso, o cogió su abrigo y se lo puso. Okay. So you think, well, hang on a minute. He's on his own. He hasn't got a child there. He's got to put his coat on. But what are those structures doing? When he puts the coat onto his son, se lo puso. What's that one? Onto his son. Then the se is actually disguised. Uh, it would be the a le. Le lo puso. So him, it, he put. Yes, yeah, so that se is because of the, we don't like cacophonias. Yeah. How do you say that? Like Cacophony. Cacophonies. The le, le, le. Yeah? Yeah, but yeah, uh, that's a word, okay. but we would never say, I don't like a cacophony of that. Right. Sound. We don't like this, a bad sound of le, le, la, lo, la, la. So we put the se, like we said before. So instead of le lo puso, le, him, it, he put, we would say se lo puso. So it wouldn't be a reflexive se, it would that's be a la, la, le, land. se. It's la, la, land that we mm -hmm. talked about. This yes. is la, la, land. Yeah. But if he put it on himself, then that se would be reflexive. Se lo puso. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that would actually yes. be a reflexive verb, ponerse. Ponerse. The verb would be in, yeah. in reflexive mode. Yeah. And that say is a real say. And that's the, uh, that's the um, uh, pronominal verb. It just, this one's a reflexive one. It's the, the verbs, pronominal verbs are the verbs that have say stuck on the end. Yeah. Well, you've, you can have poner and you can have ponerse, which would be to put on yourself. Yeah. Or ponerse. Ponerse enfermo, ponerse triste, mm -hmm. which are verbs that sure. have the se. So that the se lo puso, talking about his son, that's just poner. That's not reflexive or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Because that sentence, if he extended it, a su hijo, no? Mm -hmm. Se lo puso, a su hijo. But se lo puso on himself, then that, that, sentence, is, that sentence is reflexive. Yeah? So... Yeah. What about this one then? Because you've got, when you're reading in novels, you've got, you see, say low. And you've got to decide, hang on a minute, is this a reflexive? Or is this la la land? Yeah? So you've got to look at the context. But then you get, say lay. And you see, say lay. You have to say to yourself, right, well, what's that doing? So, for example, if you saw, se le cayó. Se le cayó. Se le cayó. When you see se le, we get into what's called the victim structure. Okay. Yeah? The victim structure. It is, it's a reflexive verb. Or, or a passive voice. Yes. As well, it could be a passive voice. For mm -hmm. example, se le explicó. Mm -hmm. It was explained to him. Okay? Yeah. But all of those that where you see se, le, and then a verb. Understand that the le is referring to the person that exactly. this is happening to, the victim. The reason that we use the victim structure, as we say it's a victim structure, is because the person is receiving it. They're not really doing anything. They're just, it's just happening to them. Yeah? Very, very Spanishy. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no responsibility here. Thank you very much. I'm just a victim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then what's happening around the say and the verb is the action of what's happening to them. Yeah. So even if what was your example with the passive voice? Se le. Se le explicó. Se le explicó. Se le dijo. We, we can have se lo dijo and se le dijo. Se le dijo would be he. It was told to him. To him. The thing yeah. was told. Yeah. To him. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was yeah. said, it was said to him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So se, se le explicó la situación, the uh, situation was explained to him. He didn't do anything. He Instead was, of saying we explained the situation exactly. to him, which would be the active voice, yeah? Yeah, so yeah, we, uh, we, in English we would say it was explained to him. Yeah, That's it was explained to yeah. him, yeah. So, but for example, se le cayó. Se le cayó. That, that would be, 
we would say he dropped it. Yes, but, but we don't like to say I dropped it. We say it fell from me. Accidentally from him and he had nothing to do with it. He was just a victim. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, not my fault. The thing if you actually, if you want to say it I, slipped my, like when you say in English, it slipped my mind. Yeah. Se me fue de la mente. Se me fue de la mente. It's like that <laughs> thing slipped your mind. You didn't, yeah. you didn't do it. The thing actually went out of your head. Yeah. yeah. So the same, the kind of the same thing. We do it in English, but we don't do it as much. In Spanish, it's quite, a, it's a very popular structure. Yeah. And especially in books, you'll see it. So what you've got to do when you're reading books, you've got to be a little bit of a detective and you're asking yourself, hang on a minute, say lo, is this, is this a reflexive verb? Or is it the, the la la land? Is this say really a lay? Yeah. And then when you see say lay, you're looking at, hang on a minute, what's happening here? Whatever's happening around that, the lay is, it's happening to the person. Yeah. Se le cayó, se le olvidó, se le ocurrió. Se le ocurrió. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, it fell from him, uh, it forgot itself from him, uh, it occurred to him. Exacto. But he's always just the recipient of that action, yeah. So you need, you need to do a say um, video with different says. That will be a long video. Hey, we could test. We could do a test, couldn't we? We could do a test on, on say. Yeah, let's do a say test, because that one will be good. Yeah. Mm. Because it, it, it's really, it's a, it's a bit difficult sometimes for, for English speakers until they get the hang of it. Because yeah. so, sometimes it could be, I mean, for us, we know that it, it's one or, or probably two in that case of celo puso. But we know what it is. But for English people, sometimes it's like, oh my God, all the options. You know it what used I mean? To drive me, it used to drive me mad when I was reading books. And every time I came, I could see a say coming up and my heart would be going... No, not another say. I don't say know which another one. Subjunctive, which uh, one's it going to be? <laughs> yeah, uh, and then you've got. But this light at the end of a tunnel. Yeah, oh, this oh, light. Once you get the hang of it. Yes. Yeah. It's not. It's not impossible. I mean, if we can do it, if kids can do it, um, it's just. Ahora me sé todo. Me sé todo. Um, most of things you learn in languages is at the end of the day is sound. Um, that you recognize mm -hmm. that familiarity. I've heard this before, I've heard this before, I've heard this before. Yeah. You can't just rely on grammar rules because the brain is not quick enough. When somebody's talking, your brain is not quick enough to go, oh, grammar rules, mm -hmm. ding. That's it, it's boobies, you know. So it's, the more you listen to Spanish, you, the more you talk in Spanish with people and hear them talk back, you read, that's when things start to become familiar. Mm -hmm. And you, when you see you see the same structure so many times, because you will see these structures one time, two times, three times, a million times. That's when your brain makes it like normal. This is a normal structure, and then it's not uphill. Sure. But at the beginning, it's uphill because you need to make the paths in your in your brain. Yeah. Of, Absolutely. Yeah. This is normal. This is normal. This is a normal mm -hmm. structure. But at the mm -hmm. beginning, it's, it's it's true that it's a little bit um, uphill. Yeah. And then it's downhill. And then it's done. <laughs> or at least it's flat. Or flat, yeah. You're on the flat, yeah. Yeah. Vale. Entonces, sí, gracias, Cynthia. A ti. Entonces, ahora. And now, a word from our sponsors. Muchísimas gracias, <laughs> gracias Jen, Jen, por mm, ese audio tan bonito. <laughs> Qué bueno. Sí, no sé de dónde es Jen. Ay, ¿de dónde es Jen? No sé, sé que está va mucho de vacaciones a, al norte de España. Pero es americana. Sí, Vamos es, a decir es americana, eso, ¿no? es americana. Sí. No Ajá. sé exactamente de dónde, pero es que Estados Unidos es, es un Europa prácticamente. Es un ¿no? continente. Um, what, we're, what we're pushing today is this. We're not pushing anything. We're not. But we are. Uh, I lied. So, <laughs> good news, all of the podcasts from the very beginning right up to now are, are now all available on Spotify. Yeah, finally. Okay. Spotify, finally. it's taken a while. They're on iTunes, they've been on iTunes for a long time, but not everyone's got iTunes. So, they're now all on Spotify, so you can actually see yep. beginners, intermediate, all of the links are permanently on every video that we post now. So you can just go there and it's also, we've also put the links in our app, 
I don't know if you've got our app, but I would get it if, if you haven't because we put on every Friday, we put on all the latest videos, you don't miss anything and anything that's important, okay? So that's cool. My sister did that. My sister helps us now, doesn't no, she? Because your sister is works doing That's her job. Computer yeah. things. <laughs> and then my sister is also on my Muchas gracias, Joan. Gracias, Joan. Okay. Finally, we've got an alternative to PayPal. Right. Lots and lots of people who want to join says Socio don't join because they don't have a PayPal account or they won't have a PayPal account for whatever reasons that they have, their personal reasons, which we're not going to go into. But... You know, that's absolutely fine. Absolutely. So, we've installed now the option of a company called Stripe. We've been using Stripe for um, about a year or more, yes. haven't we? Yes. It's extremely secure. It's so easy to use because you just use it with your card. You don't need to get an account or anything like that. You just pay and that's it. Okay, so... If you're interested in Ser Socio, you know, having lessons every Friday, two lessons every Friday with homework, transcription, the one, transcription translation. then you can come and try it out. Try out Ser Socio freely for the, for the first month. It's free and so you've got nothing to lose. You can try it and have basically in a month you're going to have eight lessons with us. And if you like it, you can stay. And if you don't, you can go. And it's easy to cancel as well. And if you don't know how to cancel it, We'll cancel it for you. Yes. Just an email saying, cancel that bugger. <laughs> and we cancel it. Yeah. Hopefully not. Hopefully you'd like it. Well, it, it's more of the same, but it's, it's uh, you know, it's it's constant and, and you get you get extra help and stuff like that. So that's the good news. Bad news? There's no bad news. I sounded like, that's the good news. And now, now the, the bad, bad news. news. <laughs> now the bad news is that this is the end of the lesson. <laughs> okay. Entonces, chicos, ahora... Nos vamos. Y nos vemos. Hasta luego. Adiós. Adiós.